That's my secret, Captain. I eat garlic. Somebody get that guy a Tic Tac. Hi, Lester, Wish You Engineer. Just a warning for those viewers who are easily bored by a lack of action, this video is almost entirely going to be me talking about garlic. I'd also like to extend that warning to include the fact that I'm not a medical doctor, a nutritionist or medical researcher. Although I'm going to be quoting from research papers that deal with the, med with the medical and, and physiological effects of garlic, I'm in no way presenting myself as an expert in this field nor am I providing any nutritional advice. I'm an engineer, the head of a martial arts school and a self-defense instructor. These are my qualifications. Although I'm not presenting any advice in this video, I'd like to go on record as saying that you should never listen to anyone's advice without first seeking expert advice, thinking for yourself, and doing your own research. Always apply rational thought and refer to the relevant experts as necessary such as doctors and nutritional experts, before making changes to your diet, lifestyle, or taking random, random nutritional supplements. For the last few months, we, like so many others, you maybe as well, have been navigating the changing global landscape as the pandemic irrevocably changes our culture and our way of life. Living on a small rural property and depending at least in part on our martial arts and coaching related businesses for part of our income, has introduced its own unique challenges. But I'm not going to talk about that in this video. I may address the changes that we're instituting in a future video because I believe it's of interest in terms of the future of martial arts training in an increasingly insular, insular culture and society that will be preoccupied with social distancing for some years to come. Over the last few months, we have slowly shifted much of our day-to-day -day purchasing to online retailers and mail delivery services, as many of you will no doubt have done. Living in a rural area does pre present many advantages during this kind of event, and for our fresh produce shopping needs, we have shifted our line of supply to the local producers, local farmers and sellers along our road. However, setting up these supply lines has not been instantaneous. Even though we had started proactively adapting to the pandemic months before most folks started clearing stores of toilet paper, it has taken time to source some products, which others, uh, while others fell through the cracks for some time. An example of one of the products that we typically use, but that fell through the cracks for a couple of months, is garlic. I've known for some time about some of the research that has been conducted on garlic in terms of its antibiotic properties. So we have regularly taken a small amount of garlic every night for many years as a prophylactic. Garlic has some very unfortunate and antisocial side effects. But what we found was that after a good night's sleep, morning training, hydration, breakfast and hygiene regimes, the antisocial elements had all but been eliminated by the body's natural processes. However, a couple of months ago, this practice kind of fell away because garlic did not feature in our, on our list of important resources to access, and we weren't growing any in our garden at the time. We had other more important issues to deal with, as many of you had. However, what I started to notice over the last couple of months was a steady decline in my endurance and strength performance during training. So much so that I had to start instituting changes in my program to support my reduced performance. I believe that this was merely due to a low ebb in my energy levels, perhaps due to the additional stress of dealing with the financial impact of the pandemic. I did not tie it in any way to nutrition because apart from a few minor changes, the bulk of our diet had not changed at all. Then, a few weeks ago, we finally got around to procuring more garlic and I decided on impulse to take some in the evenings because I felt that perhaps I was suffering from the effects of some kind of uh, low-level infection. Well, the results were quite significant and dramatic. 
Within a day or two, my energy levels, endurance, and in particular my strength, had shot back up to where it was a few months ago. The Wushu scientist also noticed an increase in her own endurance and strength in training. Although I still did not assume that the garlic had anything to do with this, I did ask the Wushu scientist to do some research on my behalf into scientific and medical papers published on the health benefits of garlic use. Of course, the Wushu scientist being uh, currently a master's um, student at uh, one of the local universities has access to scientific papers that I don't. She turned up a good deal of very interesting and compelling research attesting to some of garlic's medical benefits. It was then that I remembered reading in my youth about Roman soldiers being fed garlic to increase their physical strength. So I asked her an impulse to research any links between garlic use and physical strength in scientific research. And voila! That's where this video was born. Because the research is there, it's compelling, and it's quite recent. I thought the research was so interesting that I decided that I'd like to share it with my viewers because I thought that uh, many of you may be interested in hearing about it. I believe in giving historical knowledge the benefit of the doubt and in trying to analyze its conclusions using modern scientific methods and technology in order to either refute the claims or prove that they are indeed founded on truth. Hence the Wuxia scientists very promising research into the ancient concept of qi and the statistically significant results that have provided a strong uh, functional framework to both support and understand some of the historical claims that have been made about it. There is a pervasive attitude these days that people in past ages were somehow ignorant or stupid because they did not have access to the modern scientific approach. This attitude in itself is ignorant and stupid because it was these very people who in fact laid the foundation for the scientific method. As an example, I'm always profoundly blown away when I train traditional wushu because of the sheer genius of the historical individuals who structured and evolved the complex biomechanical concepts that form an integral part of the training. For me, I've, I always feel a bit like Indiana Jones uncovering a complex ancient tomb or an impossibly advanced ancient artifact whenever I practice my forms. So in this video, I'm going to be primarily reading from and presenting research that has been done regarding the use of garlic as a physical performance enhancer, starting with its historical use to set the context, going on to modern research and finishing with some speculation about its future as a potential legal performance enhancer in the sports industry. There are four main ref there are four references that I'm going to be quoting from extensively in this video. I'll list them now and I'll refer to them in the video description as well. As always, I encourage you to do your own research and refer to them for yourselves for more in-depth knowledge. These four references are Historical Perspective on the Use of Garlic by Richard S. Rivlin, Department of Medicine, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and the Wheel Medical College of Cornell University, New York Presbyterian Hospital, New York, uh, presented at the conference, Recent Advances on the Nutritional Benefits Accompanying the Use of Garlic as a Supplement, which was held in November 15th, uh, 15th to the 17th of November in 1998 in Newport Beach, California. The second reference is uh, Garlic Health Benefits and Actions by Chia Wan Tsai, Hao Wen Chen, Li Yan Xian, Chong Kyu Li, published in the journal Biomedicine in 2011. So excuse my pronunciations of some of the names. Um, you can read them for yourselves in the video description. The, th the, sec the third le reference is garlic supplementation increases testicular testosterone and decreases plasma corticosterone in rats fed a high protein diet by Yurika Oi, Mika Imafuka, uh, Chiaka Shishido, Yutaka uh, Komenato, Siyoji Nishimura, and Kazo, um, Kazo, Kazo Luwai. 
Not 100% sure certain of those pronunciations, but as I said, you can check them in the, in the video description below, which was published in the Journal of Nutrition in 2001. Relationship, and then the final reference, reference four, is relationship between consumption of raw garlic and hand grip strength in a large scale adult population. Now, there are a whole bunch of names associated with this. I'm not going to read them out to you um, because I've already butchered quite a few pronunciations. So you can check this reference in the video description below. And this study was published in the Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 2019, so only last year. So garlic use in terms of its historical use, garlic, garlic use is both ancient and extensive. Richard Rivlin in his paper mentions the following in the abstract to his paper, Historical Perspectives on the Use of Garlic. It is of interest that cultures that developed without contact with one another came to similar conclusions about the efficacy of garlic. Modern science is tending to confirm many of the beliefs of ancient cultures regarding cult garlic, defining mechanisms of action and exploring garlic's potential for disease prevention and treatment. His paper goes on to describe garlic use in many ancient cultures throughout history, um, which I'll shamelessly paraphrase and uh, repeat here. Garlic has origins in antiquity and is one of the earliest documented examples of plants used for the maintenance of health and treatment of disease. The earliest known references indicate that garlic formed part of the daily diet of many Egyptians. It was fed particularly to the working class involved in heavy labor, as in the building of the pyramids. Indeed, a reoccurring theme throughout early history is that garlic was given to the laboring classes, presumably, presumably to maintain and increase their strength, thereby enabling them to work harder and be more productive. Excavations of ancient Greek temples have unearthed garlic and the, pla the palace of, of Knossos in Crete, dating to uh, 1400 to 1800 BC, contained well-preserved garlic when it was excavated. As with the Egyptians, garlic was associated with strength and work capacity. Garlic formed an important part of the military diet, particularly when soldiers were off to battle. There is evidence that during the earliest Olympics, which originated in Greece, of course, garlic was fed to the athletes before they competed, conceivably functioning as one of the first of the so-called performance enhancing agents used in competitive athletics. Hippocrates, widely regarded as the father of medicine, made garlic a part of his therapeutic armamentarium, advocating its use for pulmonary complaints as a cleansing or purgative agent and for abdominal growths, particularly uterine. Garlic appears to have been consumed primarily by the lower classes. It, does not it, it, it appears to not have been a favorite food among the ruling classes and its presence in religious temples was not permitted, a proscription also found in certain Asian cultures. As in Greece, the Romans perceived garlic as an aid to strength and endurance. It was fed to both soldiers and sailors and was part of a ship's manifest when it set out to sea. The concept that cardiovascular status may be improved by garlic, presently a subject of active research, has origins in antiquity. Garlic was also recommended for disorders of the gastrointestinal tract, for treatment of animal bites and for alleviation of joint disease and seizures. In ancient China and Japan, the use of garlic as a food and as a medicinal agent has ancient origins throughout Asia. The best estimate is that by or before 2000 BC, garlic was in wide use in China and formed part of the daily diet. In ancient Chinese medicine, garlic was prescribed to aid respiration and digestion, most importantly diarrhea and worm infestation. As a spicy food, its regular consumption was recommended, but in limited quantities. Evidence also suggests that garlic was utilized to treat sadness or depression as well. In ancient India, garlic has been associated with the healing process from the time of the first available written records. Three ancient medical traditions, the Tibi, Unani and Ayurvedic, made extensive use of garlic as a central part of the healing efficacy of plants. A later manuscript dated to 300 AD advanced the use of garlic for infections, infestations and worms, weakness and fatigue, and a variety of digestive disturbances. In the Middle Ages, garlic became available in Europe after the Roman legions moved north. During medieval times, knowledge of the therapeutic, therapeutic use of plants, particularly garlic, was gained and transmitted through the monks. Garlic was grown in the monasteries. The leading text of the Middle Ages was the Hortulus manuscript from shortly after 800 AD, 
This volume described all of the plants growing in one cloister that were thought to have medicinal properties. Garlic featured prominently. Garlic was believed to alleviate constipation when consumed with beverages. Workers outdoors were advised to consume garlic to prevent heat stroke. The recommendation of garlic for those who had to do hard physical labor is a reoccurring theme dating to antiquity. Another reoccurring theme is that of the upper classes tending to reject garlic and not consider it fit for their consumption. A leading physician during the latter part of the 12th century, the abbess of Rupertsburg, St. Hildegard von Bingen, gave a garlic a prominent role in her medical writing. Curiously, she came to the conclusion that raw garlic was more effective than cooked garlic, perhaps because the latter has more pungency than the former. In the, in the medical school at Salerno, one of the most influential centers of medical learning at the time, food played an important role in the treatment of disease as well as in the preservation of good health. Garlic was classified as a hot food to be consumed during the winter to limit the development of pulmonary or breathing disorders. Garlic was also utilized against massive debilitation and later in the Great Plagues. Garlic continued to be used into the Renaissance and there are a number of examples that are cited in the paper. As I said, you can check those out for yourself by checking the, uh, the reference in the video description below. And in addition, in America, there are numerous examples, including uh, Native Americans using garlic. So finally, we come to a recent research on the medical properties of garlic. Recent research has confirmed some of the medicinal properties of garlic. As mentioned previously, garlic has long been associated with various health benefits. So I'll read, I'll read the abstract from the study, Garlic Health Benefits and Actions. Recent years have seen an increasing emphasis on foods and food components in disease prevention. Garlic or Allium sativum, one of the best researched herbal remedies, holds a unique position in history, traditionally employed to treat infection, colds, diabetes, heart disease, and a host of other disorders. Clinically, it has been evaluated for lowering blood pressure, cholesterol, and glucose concentration, as well as for the prevention of arteriosclerosis and cancer. Epidemiologically, Garlic consumption inversely correlates with the risk of oral, stomach, esophageal, colon, and prostate cancers. In addition, the biological activities of garlic include antibacterial, antithrombotic, antioxidant, immunomodulatory, and anti-diabetic actions, and modulation of drug metabolism. These have been uh, extensively investigated. I thought it was important to mention uh, the safety of garlic consumption as well. In the study that I just quoted the abstract of, it's stated that uh, consumed for hundreds of years, garlic is regarded as a safe food. However, in addition to possible interactions with drugs, several health risks have been reported to be associated with the excess consumption of garlic or with contact with garlic in the workplace. In particular, gastrointestinal tract injury and allergic reactions caused by garlic attract concern. Increased exfoliation of the gastric surface epithelial cells in healthy subjects has been reported after the intragastric infusion of a single dose of raw garlic of over 0.75 grams. By injecting 0.5 milliliters of raw garlic juice into the ligated duodenum of, ra of rats, injury to the duodenal mu uh, mucosal lining followed two hours after exposure, with severe damage including ulcers and bleeding occurring after 24 hours. Damage to the stomach and intestine may account for the decrease in body weight seen after rats were given aqueous extracts of garlic, 300 or 600 milligrams per kilogram per day for 21 days, and garlic oil, 2,000 milligrams per kilogram three times a week for six weeks. In a chronic toxicity test, however, no differences in body weight gain and in urinary hematological, serological, and histological examinations were observed in Wistar rats given the garlic extract at doses of two grams per kilogram five times a week for six months. These inconsistencies require more careful experimental designs to clarify whether garlic displays an adverse effect on gastrointestinal tract and growth, for instance, differences in garlic species, garlic preparations, and their dosage, uh, and the dosage tested merit consideration. Over recent years, the allergenic potential of garlic has become well recognized. Cases of allergic reactions, for example, contact dermatitis, asthma, uh, urticaria, pem pemphigus, and anaphylaxis have been reported in association with garlic use. 
So as with all things, caution should be exercised when introducing anything new into your diet. So we finally get to the exciting bit, which is recent research on garlic as a physical performance enhancer. In the study, garlic supplementation increases testicular testosterone and decreases plasma corticosterone in rats fed a high protein diet. The effects of garlic supplementation on protein metabolism were investigated by measuring testes testosterone and plasma corticosterone in rats fed diets with different protein levels. In experiment one, rats were fed experimental diet diets with different protein levels, 40, 25, or 10 grams per 100 grams casein, with or without 0.8 grams per 100 gram garlic powder. After 28 days of feeding, testosterone contents in the testes were significantly higher and plasma corticosterone concentrations were significantly, significantly lower in rats fed 40 and 25% casein diets with garlic powder than in those fed the same diets without garlic powder. Urinary excretion of 17 ketosteroid, an index of testosterone, nitrogen balance and hepatic organase activity were significantly higher in rats fed the 40% casein diet with garlic powder than in the 40% casein controls. In experiment two, the effect of dial, um, I'm going to struggle with this one, dial, dial disulfide, dial disulfide, a major volatile sulfur containing compound in garlic on the secretion of luteinizing hormone or LH from the pituitary gland, which regulates testosterone production in the testes were in, was investigated in anesthetized rats. Plasma LH concentration increased dose dependently after administration of dialyl disulfide. These results suggest that dietary supplementation with 0.8 grams per 100 gram garlic alters hormones associated with protein anabolism by increasing testicular testosterone and decreasing plasma corticosterone in rats fed a high protein diet. Finally, in the study relationship between consumption of raw garlic and hand grip strength in a large scale adult population, it stated that uh, garlic derived organosulfur compounds have numerous potential benefits, for example, antioxidant and anti inflammatory effects on human health. Although these functions might be related to the onset and progression of muscle strength decline, no studies have explored the relationship between garlic consumption and muscle strength in the general population. The aim of this study was to investigate whether raw garlic consumption is related to hand grip strength in a large scale adult population. So a cross-sectional study involving 28,958 participants was performed in Tianjin, China. The frequency of raw garlic consumption was assessed using a valid self-administered food frequency questionnaire. Hand grip, hand grip strength was measured using a handheld digital dyna dynamometer. Analysis of covariance and multiple logistic regression were used to evaluate the relationship between raw garlic consumption and hand grip strength. So the results were quite interesting. In males, after adjusted potential confounding factors, the least square means, 95% uh, confidence intervals of hand grip strength across raw garlic consumption categories were 42.5 for almost never, in other words, for almost never taking garlic, 43 for less than one time per week, 43.4 for one time per week. This is, of course, frequency of garlic consumption. And 43.8 for um, two to three times per week. And the p-value for that trend, for those who, for those who are familiar with, the, with what that, that represents, was less than... 0.0001, which indicates a very significant, um, statistically significant result. The adjusted odds ratios, 95% confidence intervals of low hand grip strength, um, less than the 20th percentile of hand grip strength across the categories of raw garlic consumption in males were 1, 0 0.86, 0 0.76, and 0.66. Similar results were also observed in females. And the, the study conclusions were that the study had revealed a positive correlation 
between raw garlic consumption and hand grip strength in both males and females. And it also concluded by saying that further studies are required in order to explore the causal relationship. In other words, the mechanisms are as yet unknown, the mechanism of action in, in terms of garlic's effect on hand grip strength. However, those results were quite compelling to me and quite and and quite interesting, bearing in mind that uh, we're talking about a, a significant sample size here, um, over nearly thirty thousand people. Very interesting. So finally, we come to the speculation part of the video, and remember, and uh, and, and I'll remind you that of course speculation is not. It, this, these are just my opinions. This is just my speculation. The first study appears to indicate that garlic may have an effect on hormones associated with uh, protein and uh, protein anabolism by increasing testicular testosterone. In addition, the second study mentioned appears to demonstrate a strong correlation between the frequency of garlic consumption and physical strength in both males and females. As mentioned in the second study, uh, further studies are required in order to establish the causes of the strength increases noted in the subjects. So in the absence of um, this information, we can't draw too many conclusions about what the mechanism is. Although, um, as can be seen from these two studies, there are a number of, uh, there are a number of potential uh, mechanisms that are at play here, including hormonal. However, given the long history of garlic use by the laborer and soldier classes in many different cultures and over thousands of years, and given the results of these recent studies, we can make the assumption that garlic consumption acts as a physical endurance and strength performance enhancer. Once the causality of garlic's interaction in terms of human physical performance is established, the active mechanisms may potentially be amplified in some ways, perhaps artificially. I could speculate that the results of more in-depth studies into the mechanisms of garlic's actions may give rise to artificial garlic-based sports supplements that are more concentrated, more direct, and perhaps less antisocial than natural garlic. For those of us who are not prepared to take exercise supplements and performance enhancers that come with attendant negative side effects, uh, perhaps hormonal, maybe garlic-based supplements may provide a healthier and more natural alternative. Perhaps the pre-workout mix of the future is going to smell a bit like a night out at your favorite local Italian restaurant. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.